Welcome back. In the previous segment, we defined recursion and we saw an example of it. In this segment, we are going to look at recursive objects. So I am going to give you an, some examples of recursive objects and then also an example of processing recursive objects using a recursive function. So here is a picture of what is often called an organization tree. It is called a tree because you can think of this as the root and then these are the branches. Okay? And so here the tree sort of is growing downwards but that is okay. So the important point is that there is something uh, that this is sort of the, the, the original the root or, or the original trunk or whatever and then there are these branches coming out of, coming out of it. Okay? Now an organization which is represented by this tree okay, can somehow be thought of as a recursive object. Why? Because this part or this division of that organization is itself a mini organization. And in this sense, it, it confirms to what we said earlier that a part of the object is like the object itself. And even here, this is kind of a mini organization. Here is another example. We have an arithmetic expression written down over here. So this expression can also be represented by this tree-like diagram. So let me tell you what this diagram means. So over here, these boxes are representing just the numbers 57 and 123. So these two numbers. Okay. Now these numbers feed into this box, which is a multiplier box. So this box takes the numbers that it receives computes their products and sends them off to the output that it has uh, upwards over here. This box receives 329 from this box and the product over here. So this is exactly like this plus, this plus and this plus are really doing the same duty. So this plus says that add up whatever values are being received and send them off to the top star which is this star over here. And this star also receives values from this side. So these values are 358 divided by 32. So this operator is represented is by this box and the quotient will be sent off to this side and finally the product will be sent off from this root. Okay? So this expression is also a tree like but it, it also has parts which are similar to itself. So for example, this portion is another small expression or a sub expression. Okay? So again, the entire object which is this big expression is made up of parts which are of the same kind, so which are also expressions. Here is a physical object which, is, which also has this property. So this is a tree and this has been drawn by using the turtle. So therefore you see this triangle, the turtle over here, but never mind, don't worry about that right now. So what, does, what, uh, so what are the parts of this tree? So first of all, there is this part, which is the trunk. Okay? But then if you look at this side, this portion is itself a tree. Okay? It's a small tree, but it, it really can be thought of as a tree. And on this side, there is another portion and in this case, this portion really happens to be identical to this. This is sort of just a rotated version of this. But in any case, this is another portion which is a part of this big tree but which is also like a tree. So indeed, this big tree is an object which has parts which are smaller trees. And in that sense, this big tree is a recursive object, just like expressions were recursive objects and organizations were also recursive objects. Now we will have occasion to process recursive objects on a computer. In fact, we want to process everything, so certainly recursive objects. And the natural strategy to process recursive objects turns out to be the following. So the processing the entire object 
is the same as processing all parts. And how do we process the parts? So we are going to use a recursive call if the part is similar to the entire object. Okay? So if it is just a smaller version of the entire object, we do not need to write new code, but we can use the code that we were writing for the bigger object itself. Okay? And in fact, this is exactly what happened when we wrote the code for GCD. Okay. So if you want to process organizations or mathematical expressions, you really must understand recursion and recursion indeed is sort of one of the cornerstones of computer science. The other, com the other cornerstone is iteration in some sense and iteration and recursion together could be said to be sort of two really major ideas in computer programming and also in computer science. So what we are going to do next is we are going to draw a recursive object on the screen. Okay? So this is going to be an example of processing recursive objects. So it is kind of a nice fun example, but it will contain all the elements, this is the major element that we want that when we want to process the parts, we just have to make a recursive call. Okay, so what are we going to draw? So here is a picture and this is a picture of a very stylized tree. You can think of it as a tree that perhaps somebody who does modern art might draw. It, it is actually very pretty and you might think that uh, maybe, maybe there are some, actually there are some uh, bushes that grow in uh, Africa which look like this. But anyway, this is what we want drawn. And uh, you can see that this does have recursive structure. Okay? So this big tree is really made up of two small trees and I am calling this stylized tree because maybe some of you might think that oh this does not look like a tree. So let us call it a stylized tree. Okay? So this part, this covered with this blue rectangle is a small stylized tree and on this side we have another small stylized tree and together they make up a big stylized tree, but of course they have to have this bottom portion which is which I am calling it calling a V over here. So there is a V and then there are two small stylized trees which make up this big stylized tree. What are its parts? Well there is the root, so by root I mean this point over here. Okay? So we are not really going to be drawing points, but you might as well note that that point is sort of present. Then there is the left branch and then there is the left subtree. So this is the left branch and this top thing over, over here is the left subtree. And similarly, there is the right branch and then there is the right subtree. Okay? Now we need to have a definition which is that of the number of levels. So we define the number of levels to be the number of times the tree has branched going from the root to the top. So the top is also often called leaf in a metaphorical sense. I mean the bottom is the root and the top is a leaf. Okay? So this tree, how many times has it branched? Well, it has branched over here, it has branched over here, it has branched at this level, it has branched at this level, it has branched at this level. So there are five levels at which it has branched or this tree we will say has five levels. All right, so we, are, we can now think about drawing the tree. So the tree could be drawn using turtle, but we are going to draw it using coordinate based graphics. Okay? So how are we going to draw it? Well, so if we are going to draw an L level tree, okay, if L is equal to 0, okay, so it is just the root, then we are really not going to do anything. I mean we could put down a point. but we will just be sloppy and not even put down a point. Okay? So if L is greater than 0, then we have to do something. Okay? So what is it that we have to do? So well, we are going to draw this left branch. Okay? Then we are going to draw this 
tree on top of it. But this time the number of levels in it has reduced because we have used up one level of branching over here. So we are going to draw a level L minus 1 tree on top of it. Then we are going to draw the right branch which is this branch and then draw an L minus 1 level tree on top of it. So that is this tree portion. Okay. So that is basically it. Okay. But of course in order to draw we need the coordinates and so when we say draw we need to specify the coordinates, we need to tell our program where we want the tree drawn. Okay. So maybe we will uh, one of the arguments could be Rx and Ry which define the point at which the root is supposed to be drawn. So the root we are going to tell our function that it has to be drawn at Rx Ry. Okay. Then we also should tell our function what is the total height of the drawing. Okay. So by height I mean this entire the extent, the, this extent. Okay, so let us say we tell that and we use the name h for it, similarly we tell that the width is w. Okay. Now we have told our function that the root must be present over here and the width must be w and the height must be h. So we have done our job in the sense of specifying the region in which the tree should be drawn. Well, we will make some ad hoc decisions say that the levels in this picture are equally spaced. So once we say that we have, we have done our job. Okay. Now the recursive call must figure out where the smaller trees should be placed. So when, it, when the recursive call is made, it should be made with the proper height and the width and also the proper root positions. Okay. So we need some calculation of these coordinates and we are going to see this next. Okay, so this is what we said was the requirement for drawing the big tree. So we are given Rx, Ry, we are given W and we are given H. What do we want to know? We want to know the position of this root because then we could, we could issue the command for the smaller tree to be drawn and also we could issue the command for drawing this branch. Similarly we need the position of this root and we need the height and width of the smaller trees. Okay, so let us try to work it out. Okay, so this distance, this is going to be the y coordinate, this level is the same as the level of the y coordinate of uh, the roots. Okay. So we said that the levels are going to be equally spaced. So the entire distance is h and therefore this height is going to be h upon l. Okay. Then this is the root and its x position okay, is going to be halfway of this. Okay. So what is it going to be? So this distance from here to here is rx let us say. Okay. And this entire distance is half of w and therefore this distance is w by 4. Okay. And the y coordinate of this point is Ry minus h upon L, y minus because if you remember the coordinates, y coordinate goes downward. So we are going back a distance h, y, h, h by L. So we have figured out what the coordinates of this position are going to be. So now we can instruct our recursive call as to where its root has to be drawn. What are going to be the coordinates of this? So well that is easy. So instead of going back w by 4, we have to go forward w by 4 and therefore the x coordinate is rx plus w by 4, the y coordinate is the same ry minus h by l. So all that remains now is to say how much the height and the width are going to be the, of the small trees. So the height of the subtree is going to be this entire portion, so going, for, the, going from here to here. So we just have to subtract h by l from it. Okay? So it is going to be h minus h by l and the width is going to be just half the width. Okay? So this is going to be 
W by 2. So we are more or less done, okay? so we just have to write the program now but we know all the coordinates. So one more point we need to know, draw the branches, so the branches should go from this point to this point, so we know that co those coordinates as well. So basically we have, we have done the, we have, we are done with the calculations. Okay, so here is what the program looks like, we have, we will call this function tree, it is not going to be return anything but it is just going to draw, okay. And it is first, the first argument to it or the first parameter of this function is going to be L, the number of levels. It is going to have as parameters Rx and Ry uh, which are the positions of the roots and the height and width of the region in which the tree is to be drawn. Okay? So let me just write down sort of the main, the, 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 uh, some explanation about what these uh, arguments are. L is the number of levels, the root is at Rx, Ry and the height is H and the width is W. Okay? Now this code is pretty much like what we had written in the slide earlier. If L is equal to 0, nothing is to be done. If L is greater than 0, then we are going to draw a line which represents the left branch and it is going to start at the root and it is going to go to the root of the subtree. So these are the positions of the x and y coordinates of the root of the subtree, the left subtree. Then the right branch is also going to start at the root of the main tree and it is going to go to the root of the, the right subtree. And as you, if you remember from last, uh, the last slide, these are exactly those coordinates. Now these left and right, the left and right branches are created locally inside inside this inside this call okay and they are going to go away once we exit so if we want the tree picture to survive we have to imprint them so that is what we are going to, we are doing over here we are imprinting the left and right branches and then we are going to draw the subtrees so this the left subtree is being drawn over here it is going to have l minus 1 levels these are going to be the coordinates of where the root is going to be located, this is going to be the height of the subtree and this is going to be the width of the subtree. Similarly, we will draw the right subtree, the only difference is that the x coordinate will be further to the right, that is it. And I can have a main program which does this and in fact uh, this will end up drawing the entire thing. Okay, so at this point let me stop and this is the exercise that you are supposed to do but let me stop for a second over here and let us actually draw this, uh, this tree. Okay. okay, so now we are going to see a demo of this. Okay. So let me get out of the presentation okay. and here I have the program typed in, there are a few small changes. So the program is the same except that after drawing each line, I am putting a weight statement because if I do not put these weight statements, then the drawing will happen very fast and you will not see the order in which things are getting drawn. So it is the order in which things are getting drawn is actually quite interesting. And finally, I have also put in a get click statement so that the uh, program does not uh, execute and uh, remove the picture immediately. Okay. So let us compile this. And let us run it. Sorry. Okay, so as you can see, the left branches are drawn first, then the left subtree is drawn then the right subtree is drawn. And you might notice that even within each subtree, the left part is drawn first and then the right part. So this is in fact exactly the way the program is written. Okay? So in the program we first draw the left and right branches, then we draw the left and right subtrees. So if you are 
worried about recursion, if you feel that you do not understand how recursion works, then this example is really nice because it is showing you exactly how recursion unfolds. Okay, so, what executes first, what executes next and how does it correspond to the way the program is written. Okay, so, then I am going to leave you with an exercise. So, the exercise is also there in the book and uh, some more hints are given there. So, you should certainly look at that. But you are supposed to uh, draw the, the, the real tree, the, the botanical tree that I showed you earlier and uh, some ideas on how to draw it. Well, break it up into parts. So, say there might be the trunk, there might be the left subtree and the right subtree. And this time it turns out it is convenient to draw it using the turtle rather than using these coordinate based graphics. Okay? So, what you should do is you should get the turtle to first draw the tree and on top of it draw the left subtree okay, or somewhere attached to that. Okay? After the drawing is finished and this is the crucial part, you want the turtle to come back to the original position because only then you can draw the next because if the turtle did not come back to the original position that is not good because you, you want it to be at a proper position so that only then you know where to move it so as to get to the right position. Okay? And then if you observe that uh, the structure of the tree you will see that the left and right subtrees are not exactly the same. Okay? So, the right subtree is First of all, it does not originate at the same place and second it is rotated a little bit. Okay? So, you will have to play around, you will have to play around a little bit to get this and uh, a, a suggestion is that do not try to draw the whole thing at once, but first draw a tree with small number of levels. So, maybe just start with level equal to 1 and just see whether your program is drawing just the trunk. That should be easy, but then move on to level 1, level 2 and so on. Okay, so, what did we discuss in this segment? So, we said that recursive objects have parts similar to themselves and we saw examples of many interesting objects which have this recursive structure. Then we said that processing recursive objects requires recursive functions and drawing recursive objects is a good example of how you might process recursive objects. But later, uh, in this course and certainly in other courses if you care to take them, there will, be, there will be much more substantial processing of recursive objects that you will have occasion to do. So, this is the end of the current segment. In the next segment, we are going to say a little bit more about how we should be thinking about recursion. So, let us take a break. Thank you.